So again, a massive welcome and thank you for attending our first coffee morning. You know, as, as I said in the beginning, my commitment to you is to make sure that we are open and honest communication with the things that you need to know. And I'm hoping that even in these four weeks that we've been back, you've seen that I've stuck by what I've said and where I've promised something, I've done it, and where you've wanted to be come in and, and you know, have things like this, I've done my best to facilitate them. This isn't just a one-off, this is a commitment to going forward because I need, I need your help. You know, it's, it's only me, I need your support at home, I need your support throughout the year, so I would be foolish to not engage and, and make sure. So the topic for this one is looking at what the national curriculum is, how that leads into university, because I was aware from conversations with some parents that maybe no one's explained that, you know, that no one has said what we stand for, what it looks like. You know, you may have come from very different education systems and you, know, you, you, you like the Dove Green community, but you may be not sure what that actually looks like. So the easiest way is to start at that, explain what we stand for, explain how it looks, and then plot that all the way through till your son and daughter is going off to university. That is what I'm gonna get through in the next 20 minutes. Um, I will, it is being recorded, so I will host, post that on for those parents that can't make it. And also for your reference, you know, if you miss something that I've said or you think, oh, I can't remember that, I want to post it, I want to have those videos. So just going through, this is what I'm going to cover what the national curriculum is, what the subjects they have to study, how that mish mishmashes with the ministry standards, looking at what we, yeah, the, the terminology. You know, the, the national curriculum is full of little analogies and little short, you know, KS3 and NCFE. You know, we love them in education, those acronyms. So I want to, you know, burst through some of those so that you know what I'm talking about when I send these emails. And if there is ever a terminology that I use that you don't understand, call me on it. Message me and say, I'm not sure what that means. Because like I say, I would rather you ask me and, and have that conversation than you go away thinking you, or, or even worse, making your own bid up for it. So, and then looking at how we're going to choose subjects and then how that goes into university entry. I know we're not there yet, but, you know, I've been doing this for many years. So I wanted to share with you what I already know, what I can offer, what I know needs to happen so that you can feel comfortable that knowing that the next five years are planned out in terms of how we grow that senior school. So... Just This is a, a quote that resonates with me and it talks about curriculum and it says curriculum should help children make deeper and fuller understanding of their own experiences. Right? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not one for just doing tests and learning something and, and regurgitating it. Nobody wants that. What you want is a curriculum that like, helps them see the world in a different way, that helps them make those connections. And yes, one part of that is, is assessment. It can't, doesn't go away, but that's not the, the only part of it. It's, it's so much more than that. And that's what I want the experiences to be at Dove Green. So this actually is the key stage three and four national curriculum. So I am required by the British schools overseas, so the BSO and the BSME say that I should act here like there is a school in the UK. I should make sure that the provision, the subjects, the delivery method would enable you to take your son and daughter, go into the UK and with some upheaval, because obviously you're moving country, they should be able to integrate in. So that is the first and foremost. When I'm looking at a decision, I'm thinking back to my childhood, I'm thinking to my, my nephews, I'm thinking to my, my friends and family in the UK, how would, that lie, how would that stack up against what the offering for them is? Obviously here we have the, the ministry bits of Arabic, Islamic, that, that, that we put alongside that. But at the core of it, it's like, I want to make sure that you're getting the offering. We are licensed by KHDA to deliver a UK national curriculum. That's what it is. So these are the subjects they have to do. And the thing to remember is it's not a year course. It's a three-year course. So I've said to some parents that are worried about the... Maybe last year, you know, they, it, when they were in year eight, COVID happened and they, they weren't in the specialist, so they, they're behind in science or they're behind in English. It isn't the case because we look at it over a three-year block. So even me in computer science, they haven't studied computer science in seven and eight properly. But I can make that up. I can bring in those, those connections and you'll see how I can do it in a second. It's all about objectives. 
It's all about these I can do statements across those three years. And it links between the different subjects that are here. We try and bring in real world links. So where there is a link to something happening now, we will make it. And I think the bit that I wanted to point out is that our curriculum is cyclic and not linear. So some curriculums, you learn a topic, you take the test, and that's it, and then you move on. You know, that's great, and I'm not going to ever slag off anybody else's curriculum. That's not how I think we learn. We have to continually revisit. So, yes, you will repeat stuff into year eight and into year nine, but you maybe look at that objective in a different way. So that's what I mean by that cyclic. So just because you weren't here in year seven or year eight, just because they had a different teacher in year seven, year eight, that doesn't matter because we're talking about monitoring over a three-year cycle. So there is time built in to repeat and, and where, we, where we realize that classes, you know, maybe half the class can't do that, we put our own interventions in. You know, I spoke to many of you in my email at the start, we, we started this year with intervention. We said, right, what did they get wrong in their progress tests at the end? And what can we do about it? So the maths and English and science, that's where they started their year. Now they're following these objectives and they're matching it in. Just to give you an idea of how that looks, this is for me, these are my objectives for computer science or computing over the three years. Right? So that is all, they, when I say that is all, that is what they have to do. So if I wanted to do, be a traditional curriculum, I could just teach these in one instance, test them and say, fine, we're done. But that's not what we do. I cover these over and over again, over those three years, looking at them in different ways, with different software, looking at them in different contexts. And that is what all of the subjects do. So don't, I think I keep stressing, don't worry about what's gone before. It will be repeated, it will be looked at, and it's the teacher's job to diagnose where there are gaps. We're an international school. We're gonna have people joining us. Right? We have to be able to be flexible enough to build into our assessments, build into our planning to allow that. Yeah? That's the, probably the one biggest difference about you know, home country to here. You know, my class, there was hardly any new people. I saw them for five years all the way through. Yeah, we didn't have to worry about students coming in. Yeah? It's a different context. That doesn't mean we can't plan in for it. It doesn't mean that we just ignore those. So just, just know that that's a plan. Okay, then moving on, at the end of this year, we move into our key stage four. This is our IGCSE GCSE year. This is the one, again, this is now a two-year course. So this starts again, it's still cyclic. So if you're taking GCSE maths, you don't expect everybody to know everything from year nine. You start again. But it might be the pace at which you do that will obviously be faster. So you, you, you cover it quicker, and then you move forward on to that letter, letter topics. Um, for Arabic, if you are obviously Arab holder, you have to do Arabic all the way through. If you are a, a non-Arabic or Arabic B holder, you have the option to drop Arabic at the end of year 10. So you still have to study it for, for year 10, but at the end of year 10, you have that option to, to drop um, that. And, and some students, that in, the, in my past have used that time to, to focus on another subject. Some of them do sort of maybe their mother tongue. You know, if, they're, if they, they want to, if they speak a language at home that we don't offer, then they can get an extra GCSE by, by following that. And the time, they can do sort of a self-study module within that. So that's an option that we, that we can offer. It obviously ends in the formal exams. This is their end of their secondary curriculum. And it's, there's two choices, two pathways. You either have the IGCSE, which are the international GCSEs, or you have GCSEs, which are the UK-only qualifications. They are interchangeable. They are equivalent. The only difference is that the international ones still use A-star down. Uh, the GCSE uses the 9 to 1 scale. So a 9 is equivalent to a top-end A-star. So at the moment, we have not made the decision on which, which ones we are doing, um, because that goes down to the exam board that we choose. Now, I haven't got a preference yet. This will be something that we would do with the team. The one I have used before is Pearson Edexcel. That has both GCSEs and IGCSEs. It also leads nicely into the international A-level. The resources are good. Um, 
I'm familiar with it. The other one is AQA. It's, it's, that's the Oxford AQA group. Um, at the moment, their resources are very good. They're very good for international. The downside to these is they, they run them on the UK Times. So when you're having an exam, you have to sit them at the UK Times. So if you've got an afternoon exam, that's a five o'clock start here. So when I did my invigilation last year, some of the exams I did were GCSEs. It's a very late start, whereas the Edexcel normal, the IGCSEs, they're zoned. So they send a separate paper for this, this zone, the Middle East. So they're, they're a nine and a one start. So it all depends on you know, what options they're looking at. Um, it all depends on, on what, yeah, yeah, please do. All depends on, on what options. So I will be looking to make a decision on this probably January, February, so that I can get myself enrolled with them, get the courses ready to run into year 10. So I just, just wanted to share that with you. What that looks like in terms of, of, of subjects, they have to do maths. English and science. There's no, no negotiating on that. That has to be done. Um, not only by the UK standard, but also by the ministry standard. Um, what I normally offer is I normally have language and literature in year 10 because there are still literature objectives that, that year 10, 11 have to cover. So everyone does those. And then I normally give the option of taking the GCSE in literature if they want. Some students will do it some students won't but I like to prepare them to do it um, so in essence what they can get is one two three four five six so that's seven GCSE straight away as a, as a, as a min there is a, an alternate there are some students that that aren't strong in their science that maybe don't want to follow a science pathway they maybe you know journalism or um, you know business or or several other pathways that doesn't need science they can opt for the coordinated science course. And what that is, it's two GCSEs and it's a, it's a mixture of all the sciences together. So it's still biology, chemistry, physics, but it's a mixture of them all, a sort of a grounding. So it meets the objectives of the national curriculum. It covers all of those, so we're compliant, but it's not three exams in, in, in all of them. So that's an, a pathway that we can offer. The, the only thing with that is it limits then what they can do after. If you're choosing a coordinated one, it would be very hard for you to follow like an engineering or a, a medical one. Because medical normally requires biology, chemistry, physics. They, they want those three sciences uh, and that's what they'd be up against. So I would normally advise if they have even the inkling of doing that, not to do the, uh, it's not impossible, but what you've got to remember is it's being taught at a lesser level. So if they were then going to do A levels in biology, chemistry, physics, there is a massive gap and, and it's really tough for them to catch that up. So again, there's a slide here, how I counsel them in that and that comes into that. Then we have the options. We would normally offer three optional subjects. Now, I can't tell you what they are because I don't know. What I will be doing is I will be meeting with the year nine parents, the year nine students, and we'll be looking at what their interests are. This is a typical example for me. You know, I would have something like business, some kind of art DT pathway, computer science, psychology is in there. Um, and then uh, psychology, language, also, and then something vocational like BTEC, sports, or music. Now, I have to be honest with you, I cannot offer every one of those subjects. I have 20 students in year nine, so I can't have one student, one teacher for, for all those different options. What I will have to do is look to have a mix. Now, I know that some people will be disappointed. I'm just going to say it out now. I have to apologize in advance. It will not be the first choice for everyone, but there will be a pathway. There will be something that it, you know, I'm not just going to offer all humanities. I'm not just going to offer all academic ones. There will be a balance, but it'll have to be a balance based on popularity because I just don't have those teachers. So we will find those through and I will be very honest with you what I can and can't offer. Um, you know, psychology is one that I love. I have our, in fact, our new counsellor is, is qualified to teach psychology. So we can, I, I may be able to draw on that, but it all depends on the numbers. Guaranteed we can offer computer science because I can teach it. So that one will go ahead regardless. Um, you know, I, I'm pretty sure that business will be offered because that's, that's popular anyway. Um, it would just be the likes of 
um, it will be the language and the art DT bits. They're the ones that I'll need to look into. So we'll, we'll have more on those conversations later on, but just so that you know where we're going with it. Then we finished that, so they've all sat their GCSEs, they're now 16, and they've had a great summer, and now they're, they're embarking on their, their Key Stage 5 course. Again, it's a two-year course. The only difference this time is obviously we, we would build upon um, their GCSEs. Um, we can't ever teach an entire A-level course in two years plus the end of GCSE. So that's why it's important that we, that we make sure that we've got that we're doing the right levels, so it's, that they've got that curriculum knowledge already. Quite often I'll give like pre-reading as well for this. So if they're gonna choose biology, if they're gonna choose something, lots of the teachers will put like a summer pack together for them. So if they know they're gonna start the course, it's like, you know, you'd expect the pre-reading. Yeah, we'll, we'll give a few ideas, you know, what you, could, what you could read, what you could think about. Nothing intense because they deserve a summer. They'll have studied their, their absolute backsides off. They will have been so focused. They deserve to have a break but something to help them prepare in August before we start back. Um, IAL is International A-Level. That's the course we probably look to do. Uh, if we do the Edexcel one, they're modular. So I won't be following the Cambridge one, I know that. I don't, I don't like the Cambridge model. Um, it doesn't tie in as well to the national curriculum as what the others do. Um, the IAL is modular. So the, for, say for instance, science, they will do three modules then they, sit a mod, they, they, they can sit three of those modules and then they can sit them, build up their modules over the two years and that then counts towards their A-level. So it's not relying on one fat exam at the end, um, which I quite like the idea of that, that, that over time they're, they're studying, they're taking exams in, they're seeing what they do. They can always reset them. There's, there's reset opportunities as well, but it means that they, they, they're clear where they are and what, they know what they need to get and, and it never comes as a shock at the end as to what grade they're going to get because they're building this up over the year. Um, this is the preparation for university entry. So right now, as we start year 12, we're thinking about university. Right? We're thinking about right, what is it. We don't need them to be rock solid on. You know, they're not going to say, I want to be this because I, I know no one in year 12 that could pick that. You know, I wanted to be a computer programmer, a game designer in year 12, and, and now I'm head of senior school. So it's about... An, an, avenue of what you know what do you what interests you and and yeah it's like saying right what type is it are you interested in the social sciences are you interested in in engineering that's the sort of questions we'll be having and again on the next slide I will show you how I go about that uh, and then obviously we have to be mindful of of these application processes you know I have sent students to universities all around the world you know in the in the 14 years that I have been here you know I've amassed a significant amount of experience in what that entails, you know, what the criteria is, when we have to do it. So I'm used to, you know, knowing, for instance, if you're going to do medical, the applications are earlier than, than normal. Um, what I'm a fan of is encouraging the student to do their own research. I will support that student and our team will support those students, hey, 100%. But we're talking about a 17, 18 year old. They're gonna go to university. They need to be not being spoon fed. If they're going away to university, they should be responsible for finding the bits of that information they need, look, doing their own research, and I will be promoting that. Obviously, I will support them, but they need to be a little bit more mature and focused because you know, that's what you expect. They're gonna be away from you. So, you know, and then the US, obviously, they're different states, different criteria. Are they going for a scholarship? Are they not? All of those things we can find, we can support them on. I'm aware, you know, so don't think that just because I'm from the UK, that's the only thing that I'm thinking about. Of course, I know that one better because that's the one that I came through. That's the schools that I've worked in more, but it's an international environment. So I am aware of things, you know, like for instance, Germany, you know, they need, a, they need the language bit to go into. You know, if you go to Hungary, if you're going to an Arabic speaking one, they will need the Arabic GCSE to count towards their visa process. You know, I'm aware of all those things. And, and basically that's on a one-to-one -one and we support that and we can make sure that they can get to the university and the course that they want. My favorite statistic at this point is that, yeah, I can, I can speak 5A star to C percentages. I can speak about how, what percentage got the A-levels. I, I don't care nearly as much as how many students got 
to the next level of education that's right for them, whether that be from GCSE to A level, A level, you know, it may not be that they go to university, it may be that they, they do some kind of vocational course, they, they do on the job course somewhere, they do an internship, they do, you know, anything. As long as they're happy and it's right for them, I don't care that that's not an A level, it's about finding that pathway for that's right for your son and daughter. And I think, you know, you wouldn't have sent them to a community school if you didn't want that for them. If you want them to be an exam factory, you wouldn't have chosen here. I, I know that. And I won't make this become that because I don't believe in it myself. Uh, so this is how I support them. So, of course. Yeah, yeah. That's on the next slide. But there you said, it's them who's going to choose. They have to make up their yeah. mind. And so just, that's, that's what I said. I said on the next slide, I'm going to tell you how I support them with that. So I, I, I was just talking about here, making sure that I, I add a little bit more autonomy. In, in year 11, it's going to be way more guided and supported with those choices. Into year 12 and 13, I, I, I'm trying to prepare them to go is what my point. Not that I'm just, I don't say it's your, and I stand back. So this should help you with that. So here, this is what I do. So in, in year nine to 10, there's gonna be meetings. Yeah, I'm gonna be meeting with one-to-one -one with the families of every year nine. We're gonna be talking about what it is interests you, what it is that you, you know, maybe have thought about as a career or thought about. And then that's initial discussion. Alongside that, I will give them taste the days. So where we've got those optional subjects, what I usually do is I usually collapse a day in, in maybe April, May time, and they go and sample the courses. You know, because like for psychology, they don't know what psychology is because they've never studied it. So I put on like a, a lesson or two where they go to the teacher, teacher delivers a sample lesson and, and takes questions. I also have them for the parents as well. So there's, there's a student version where they get to see it, but there's also a parent version. They can speak to that teacher. So I will provide those opportunities for you to engage with those teachers. I will have an electronic platform, and it's, it's on the next slide, called Unifrog. And what that does is it helps guide them. They, they take, you may have done this when you were at school, you, you put in your interests, and it kind of gives you an idea of the possible university courses or the possible careers comes from those questions. It's not definitive, but again, it's, it gives you an idea along with the conversations, along with the university, along with just them developing themselves. You know, they, they know they will become to like a certain subject. That's, imagine that triangle together is the best thing I can do to guide them from nine into 10. And what I always say is at year, nine to ten pick something you enjoy right there is no limitation at all right i would rather you take something that you are going to get a high grade in because you enjoy it than take something that your mum or dad wanted you to take that you're not 100 percent invested in and the reason i say that there is no absolute no limitation on that it will not stop the a levels that you do Right, because the, an entrance criteria for A-levels here, around the world, is what you've got. Yeah, the only caveat that I would say is, if you, is the science. If you think you're going to follow a science pathway, don't take coordinated science. Right, that's the only one that's kind of limiting. And even then, if the student was adamant, you know, if they made a mistake, they'd studied it, they got an A star or a 9 in, co in coordinated science, I would let them follow the discrete one because they've made a, they made a bad choice, but they would have a lot of work to catch up. So this is the most important thing, pick what you will enjoy. So don't worry that there isn't, oh, you know, they want to be this and I haven't got the option for that. It doesn't matter. It's about how many A star to C's you get. That's what you want. And then we take from those nine, we filter that down into a minimum of three. That's where we're starting to think. So if they're thinking about um, like journalism, political sciences, you're going to want that English, history, that style, of course. If you're thinking about medical, if you're engineering, you might have the physics and the chemistry along with something else. So that's where we start to tailor it. And that's what the electronic platform will help us with. It will say, well, if you want to go to Cardiff University for their physics course, this is what you need. If you want to go to Edinburgh to study art and design, this is what you need to think about. So again, we're supporting them, them with that. 
Um, and obviously at this point there are entrance criteria. And the reason we have that, I normally say a B or a seven or an eight to get into that A-level course, because we, you need to be sure that they've got that knowledge. They've demonstrated that they've got that knowledge in their GCSE. We know there's that gap between GCSE to A-level. So if they've only got a C, and I'm gonna start them here, they're gonna struggle. Again, that's not to say that we won't take them. You know, we, we, if it's our own, own people, it might be that they have to do some resits. It might be they need to do some work over the summer. You know, I will facilitate that um, on a one-to-one -one basis. So don't feel that we're, we're, I'm not just going to write off somebody because they didn't get a high enough. There will always be a way, there's always a way forward. There's always a pathway. It just might be not the one that they or you want. So that's what we have to look at on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, and again, we then go into case stage five. We're doing all that, but like I just said, it's still not 100% limiting, right? My, my A-level was in maths, uh, computing, and Russian is what I did my A-levels in. Um, I didn't get great A-levels in them. And I ended up going to do a degree in mathematics. And I had to study really, really hard. So it, it didn't limit me then moving into teaching and, and now, you know, standing here before you, the success story that, 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 it, that, that was that, you know, turning it around, realizing I had to work harder, all the things that I'm sure all of you have gone through in your life. You know, so that's what I want. Don't extend that pressure to your son and daughter to make a decision, you know, extend onto them what they want to do. They don't need to know now. Just know that that pathway is there for them and it will change and they will like subjects one year and not like another the next. They may like a teacher, not like a teacher, but eventually we will get there and they will be prepared to get to university. And that's what, that's what we want. And they're well-rounded and everything else. So these are the platforms that I've got. I will build into that the pastoral programs, them thinking like things like writing their personal statements, things like doing that research, the importance of their autonomy. I do things on financial management. You know, thinking, you know, some of them say, I want to go to go to Harvard to study law. Okay, do you realize how much that costs? You know, are you in a position? Are your parents in a position to, to afford that? You might want to do it, but without a scholarship, it's not realistic. You know, so we build that in, and, and, we, and this is where we engage with, with you to have those discussions and say, you know, you know I, I, I couldn't go away to university because my father got made redundant when I was in A-levels. I was still working, so I stayed in my hometown and I went to university there. So I understand these things happen, but, you know, you need, they need to be aware that just because they like the idea of studying in a, in a certain country or a certain university, that might not be the reality. But we will support them either way. Um, I will have a UCAS link for the UK, so because we're a part of a BSO school, we, we ha we have, we'll have that accreditation. I will be able to offer, um, that's their university portal. So what I can do is I can get their choices like I'm in the UK. So you fill it in, we do it as a school, fill in their personal statement, choose the university courses they want, and it goes straight away to the UK, and it's like they're in the UK for university applications. That's the only one that I can do direct. Others, you have to join schemes, like for Canada, um, they have a similar scheme, but it all depends on where those students are going. Now, we're, we are a UK school, so you would expect me to have that at the core, uh, but like I said before, I will support you wherever you're you know, planning on, on, on sending your, your son and daughter. And then just think about this, it, it's not just, I like to put this, not just the greats, yeah? There are thousands of people around the world that are going to come out with four A's at A level or 10 A's at GCSE. It's how do you make yourself stand out? And, you know, it's those things like the sports, like the activities that they can do. You know, for me, this one is amazing, the, the Duke of Edinburgh's International Award. Um, and I will be offering that here in year 10. And what that is, is they, it's the one that does the camping in the desert. And, you, and they have to work as a team and they have to do some service and they have to you know, plan their meals and be away from home for two nights and, and, and cook their own food and carry their own stuff. And I just think it's so important. In the luxurious world that we have here, sometimes it's easy for them to forget what the real world is like. You know, what, that, that we don't have nannies everywhere, that we don't have somebody cleaning up after us and, and, and doing all of that. So I, I love that. And, and I, I've taken trips to Oman. I've done them in Sharjah. And, and, and every time, 
what they get from it is amazing. So that when you see things like that, get them to sign up because they're the things that enrich them for their personal statement. You know, when, they, when they're writing what they've done, they don't just care about those grades. They're saying, you know, fine, you can be a great student. I had a student two years ago who got four A stars at A level. He, he got 10 A stars in his GCSEs. All that he did was focus on those. And he struggled to get into a university because every time there was something else, like, like the Duke of Edinburgh, like signing up to work with, with students, trying to get himself an internship, trying to you know, go and do something extra, he didn't. He just focused on those grades. And what was coming back is that, yeah, you're academically brilliant, but the university was like, we've, we've, got, we've got millions of these, but we want someone that can do all of that, but also understands the importance of you know, community involvement, understands that there's more to life than just your grade. You know, so you know, that's what I would say to you. It's not just about that, it's about that whole experience. And then finally, um, I've touched on this. Like I say, I excuse the graphic, it's a bit, a bit, it looked better on my screen last, last night when I put it on. Uh, I'm about them having these discussions. I, you know, where they want to go to university can be about where you have family, you know, where, you, where the financial implications of that, home school status, supporting, if they're going to go fly around the world, who's going to be there to support them, take them to university? So it's about looking at their course in the place that is right for them and they feel happy they want to go, but also being mindful of the real world limitations that, that you face. Uh, and I just wanted you to know that I'm, I'm mindful of that. I am not going to be sitting there and saying, yeah, you, you should all go to Oxford and Cambridge, right? Yes, it's the right pathway for some. It's not the right for everybody. And we'll work on that together. And I think that's where I will leave it. I'm three minutes over, so I apologise. Has that been useful? Is there anything on there that you, you're not sure of, that you can't picture? Um, I'm happy to take those questions about, about the pathway to university. What I'd love for you to leave here thinking is that I am clear about what Mr. Frearson has in store for those years all the way through to year 13. If, if it is brilliant, you can go. If not, please. I always have questions. I'm sorry. Don't ever apologize for questions. Okay. I did not see any history and geography in the optional uh, subjects. Yeah, so what you, what you heard me say is that I haven't decided those options because it'd be based on those I would love to offer. A, well, there will be a humanities for sure, or humanities stroke social sciences. What that is will depend on those numbers. Uh, if I have one person that wants to do history, I won't be able to put history on. Um, Why when will you know? Because these subjects are really important to you. You will, you will know... Yeah, it will, it will, I know that for some people it will be the deciding factor on, on where they stay. I, I know that. We would know probably by... I normally do the surveys and things around sort of January, February. And because I have to start recruiting for those teachers in January, February. I then normally do a second at the end of February, March, before that spring break is where I've got my sort of provisional idea of what... what I normally ask them all to do a survey, and then from that I can look at what is feasible, what I've got the staff for. Um, so you, you would have a rough idea by then. It would never be set in stone because I might have an influx of people in, in, in term three for year 10 that, that, that want a different option. So I, I take it you've got, you know, you've got to do what's right for, for you. Yeah, so I think you would, have to, you would have to look at the end of term two and if I'm, you know, if, if I can't tell you for definite of that subject, I won't lie. I, would say, I, I can't tell you for definite that that will run. Um, and at that point, I would, you know, I, don't, I wouldn't want to lose you, obviously. But I, I get that. I get that if that's the pathway you want to follow, then if I can offer it, I will. I don't want to lose anyone. But I just need to be honest that I, I know that I can't do it. Um, you know, it, it's, it, it's a model of... Numbers versus staff. I can't commit. A t I can't buy a teacher in for one student to deliver that that course. And, and I think you would know that. You know, the, the course fees wouldn't even cover their. You know, one person wouldn't cover that. And, and unfortunately, it, it runs on a business model. I can't. I can't just do that. So if I can use them for something else, so this is why I look for. You know, 
alternate subjects, look for secondary subjects. You know, Miss Hussain was supporting with science and art because that's her background. You know, I've got Mr. Dre supporting between the art and design because that's, that's their background. So I will use those where I can bring in teachers that have those multiple disciplines where they can. So like for me, mine's computing and maths. So I have multiple ones. You know, I can be flexible on there, but I'm limited on what I can deliver because I need to, I need to be about getting this, this sorted and leading this school and getting and, and fulfilling what I'm promising you here. So that's my honest answer to you. By the end of term two, you know, that's where you, I would know very closely and then it'd be up to you what, what decision you make for that. Yes, of course. You, you can always change. For sure. It's so it's it's kind of locked in. It, it, there is an element of truth to it. What you're saying is that the GCSE course is a two-year course. And although those objectives will be the same, so if you move from here back to the UK and study the same course, yes, you can do that, but there would be slight differences in the order because we personalise the order based on the students we've got in front of us. Even I would study here a different combination for computer science than I would in, when I did it in, in Wellington. So that's what they mean by locking in. What happens is if you move... The end of year 10 is normally okay. There are very few places that would take you in in year 11. Like for instance, I'll be honest with you, I wouldn't take a year 11 student in unless they'd come from a British school, they are studying exactly the same board, exam boards, and I've looked at their cap profile and they are strong enough to do that catch up. So they would be my three, you know, I cannot say no to admissions, you, you, you could have very often for obvious reasons, but that would be one because my argument would be I can't meet their needs, I can't guarantee they're going to be successful. So that's the, again, it's the honest answer for that. So yes, it is normally a commitment for two years and normally people either move in year nine or year 11. You know, lots of people, will, lots of people from, like the M, from the IB will move into, will move into A-levels. Lots of people from GCSEs may go and choose to do the diploma. So they're the times that they move. You know, we don't want them to move, but that's when it is normal. So that's when you hear being locked in. It's not, it's not that, it's just, it's harder. So if you did, you know, heaven forbid you had to move, you would be able to find somewhere. It would just be the pressure on him to... To, to catch up is, is all it would be. Does that answer your question? Anybody else? Yes. Can, let's say, okay, my daughter wants a subject and the school cannot have it. I, I fully understand. But can the student then do it as a self-study? Yes. Yes. So, so the let's, say, let's say she's interested in history. Yeah. And uh, history wasn't an option. So can she do it alone? Yes. Outside? Yes is the answer to that. I mean, the only thing I would say with that is that the, the quality of her provision on that isn't there. Um, but abs absolutely fine. When you sign up to the exam board, you can enter for multiple exams. I just, I would have to, I will initially be the, the, the um, exams officer. I would just have to say that if it's coursework, I'd verified the coursework. She wouldn't have the support on the drafts of those coursework. If, as long as you were happy with that, yeah, we could enter those in. That's not an issue. The only one that would be difficult is if it's a GCSE in a, in a language that we don't have. So say you were offering, know, like German for instance, German GCSE has an oral component. I would need, somebody would need to be an examable person, would need to be able to deliver that exam because I don't have anybody that can speak German to deliver it. So we, it might be that we have to you would have to find someone that would be willing to do but I could work with you on that that's that's absolutely fine anything else yeah of course I mean as 
as she studies the different subjects, she will, she will find other bits that she likes. I mean, biology is a common one you hear. I like biology because it's, it's not the easiest of them, but it's the one that they can see the most. You know, they are, they're a biological creature. They can, they can see the real world with them. So it's, it normally is typical they like that. But as they study chemistry and physics, and they will find the bits they do. They, they're studying humanities. When we have those taster days, they will be able to sample bits of business, psychology, and... and Yes, is the answer to that. And then even down to when they do the online questionnaires, they, it gives them prompts and things. So they're able to find it. And like I said, it, it, they will find it themselves. You know, that it, it, 100%. You know, it, I know of nobody that knew what they wanted. Or oh, not nobody, that's the wrong word. Very few people know what they want at this point in time. You know, and that's it. So... Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So what I would say is, if you still can't decide, what I what I always advise is that you take a non-committal approach to options. So, for instance, something like maths, biology, and business. Okay, right. You've got a bit of science. You've got your maths, and you've got your social science. That combination won't prevent you following anything else as long as you get the decent marks in there. So we would, that's what I would look at with them. It's like saying, yeah, if you're, gonna, if you're not sure what you want, great. Do you like these subjects? You know, a, a maths, geography and something, or an English history and something else. Those will, will not limit you. And as long as you're enjoying them, again, even at A-level, as long as you're enjoying them, that's what you want. That's the pathway they would follow through. Is that okay? Is there anything you want to say or? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for backing up that. See, it's not, see, I like the bit of validation there that, 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 that we're talking the right thing. So hopefully that's been interesting for you. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, there will be more of these, like I say, um, looking at different topics, going throughout the year, just so that you're able to come like you are today and, 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 and ask those questions and, and be clear yourselves on, on, on what we're about. So have a great weekend. Help yourself some cakes on the way out and uh, I will see you all soon. Thank you.